want you, first of all, to tell the person beside you, remind them from yesterday's lesson, how would you enlarge with scale factor two from a centre, and more importantly, how would you enlarge... Co-teaching is something we did at Arc Academy last year. Um, as a new school, lots of staff had uh, lighter timetables than others, so therefore we were used in lessons or timetable down to go and support pupils, and um, yeah, it was a really good experience, actually. It was kind of like doing mini lesson observations without having to give feedback and just taking all the positives from the activities which you then use in your lessons. Lots of things I'd never seen before in other lessons which I thought were great. Lollipop sticks, I'd never seen them before. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down, I think I, I borrowed that. And the other way round, sometimes at the end of a lesson, I might say to a member of staff, oh, have you thought about trying this, something that works in my lesson, which they can use. Giving feedback on individual pupils, so sometimes a pupil that kind of shies away in the corner or the pupil that has a particular need, giving little feedback because I was able to work as a one-to-one -one or in a small group with those pupils. How are we doing? Have you finished the other ones? What I've liked about some co-teaching is seeing the different types of homeworks and I'll be totally honest, in, in RE, I have actually done a couple of them myself and been really proud that I've had my work displayed. <laughs> um, so, how did today's lesson go? Um, in terms of the things that we were getting wrong at the start of the year, in terms of timing, in terms of... Co-planning enables planning to be better because we learn from each other, first of all. I learn from my staff and they learn from me and they learn from each other too. But it's also a great way of um, modelling how we teach and how we um, plan lessons to new members of staff in the school. So it's been really effective in helping our NQT, for example, get to grips with how we structure and plan lessons. Excellent. Good ideas. We could use some of these comments that they made themselves in the plenary today because yeah. these are their own targets they've given themselves. Mm -hmm. So if we put some of these up onto slides to say, OK, these are points that you said you need to work on. It also showed them that we're... In the maths department, we co-plan everything from schemes of work, medium-term plans, lessons, um, absolutely everything. We sit down together, everybody gets involved, everyone owns a bit, everybody's got a new idea. We share our resources, so it's really efficient. Um, it also means it's consistent, so what's going on in my classroom, I know what's going on next door in Emmys and Nick's and Jeanette's. So last week um, we realised there's an assessment coming up, so we decided to prepare the students directly for it by looking at PEA, which is Point Evidence Analysis. Our title is Perfect PEA Revision. I would like you to write down in your exercise book what is the most difficult part of PEA for you and why. Is there anybody else without a PEA definition on their tables? The point is like what you're going to say about the, um, this, which is the evidence. Yeah, so you can say uh, like the reader say. The writer made the wall feel really eerie because when you go to a battle, it's going to be basically there. And we said because it's alliteration, bedroom is alliteration. Yeah, we have to write like technique. Oh, well, because bedroom is alliteration. Yeah, yeah. So the bedroom is right like with the technique. Got about four and a half minutes left to finish this paragraph off for me. Please use the success criteria to help you construct your paragraph. If you're looking at an academic essay, you need to have an appreciation of different readers. Okay? So think about that now. You're going to quickly, in your groups of four, read your paragraphs to each other. Listening out for the success criteria. There's a success criteria. Thank you. Yeah. The battle started very suddenly with the rambling of the machine guns crazy. The person reading this book might feel a sense of awe and fear. I say fear because the two words are really overwhelming. So compared to the battlefield time, people that stay at home wouldn't know that battlefield, the battlefield wouldn't know that wouldn't know what the battlefield would be like. It felt as if the ground shook during the impact. The words erupted, explosion and earthquake, these are all words which describe destruction. Okay, just make sure you're finishing off that sentence. If you have finished, just use the success criteria to double check that you've done everything you can to get that PEA paragraph the best you can. So you need to write one target from the success criteria that you want to achieve next lesson. 
What is it that you find most difficult? Point, evidence, or analysis? This is a uh, self-observation video. Basically, you go to an observation room, book in a slot, and take your class there. Um, and afterwards, sit down and watch it, either by yourself for a self-reflection, or we've often sat down together and watched either mine or Emmy's video afterwards. In a way, observed it together. It gives um, us a chance to see what's going on in the other person's lesson and to talk about how a lesson went, what we want to do differently next time. And just looking at pace and transition between different activities and individual pupils, what are they doing? Are they fully engaged? No, but it's good to move around the room. I mean, you're making your presence felt. It'd be interesting to see exactly what that child is doing. So obviously we're watching this video on Emmy's computer in her classroom now, but one of the things we've done before is we've watched lessons live. So you sit in the observation room and what you can do then is when you think somebody over here might be paying attention, you just use a joystick to zoom the camera like you this. can actually see really clearly what students are writing either in their books or on their whiteboards. That's useful. So in science what we do is we schedule ourselves in to record ourselves at least once every half term. This is a recording room. There's cameras up, three in this room and sound mics then run throughout. You do learn a lot from, definitely from the first one because you are very much looking at if I was to teach that exact lesson again, I know exactly now what I'm going to do differently. I've learnt lots of things, really. I've learnt um, exactly what children are doing at the back of your classroom, mm -hmm. when you think <laughs> that they're doing what you've asked them to do. Um, they're also really nice to watch for other people. Um, that It's all very well telling someone this is a really good behaviour management technique, but if you can just watch a 20-second clip of someone doing it in your department in a classroom that's exactly like yours, it's much easier to be able to copy what they're, what they're telling you than... Yeah. if someone's just telling you what to do. And the point is that it's not a, a threatening thing for somebody to have a video of you. It's us a, as a department. Um, it links with being a, a reflective practitioner, co-planning every day. It's the fact of we make some mistakes, some things are good about our videos, some things are things we want to work on, and, and that's the way it is. It is important to be reflective as a teacher. You, you, have, to, you have to be, simply. Um, yeah, you could live in a bubble and think every lesson I teach is an outstanding lesson, but is it really? We tell the children all the time to do exactly the same thing. At the end of a lesson, think back, what have you learned over the lesson? At the end of the topic, what parts are you still struggling with? What do you need to fill in? So if we're telling them to do it in order to improve, we need to do it in order to improve. Everyone, without realising it, is becoming more reflective if they weren't before. New staff members and everyone else in the department can see that I'm open about my teaching, I'm willing to improve, and that even though I've got X years of teaching experience, I'm still willing to improve and I still need to improve. Like if you're not willing to have your classroom door open when you teach and let people come in and watch you because you've looked back and thought this is as best, you know, this is the best I can do, it's, I think it's pretty sad really. Reflective practice is an everyday thing. Awesome. Wicked. What's next? <laughs> That's it.